Yeah, I have a bunch of stuff going on, but uh, so so I've been super busy and working all the time and tired. So uh, I'm postponing my more complicated builds like that that I've been wanting to get around to. But instead, I've just been playing with all the pieces and parts, um, and it got me going on a really good track. So I love uh, press cameras. I love cameras that you either use very hastily uh, with a viewfinder and scale focus. Or you can take your time with the ground glass. I like that uh, that that split in a camera. And so I've been playing with press cameras. And one of the things I've wanted to do is get away from using the handful of old uh, large format lenses and and start because I like shooting 120 film. I like shooting medium format. So a big step for me was to start playing with uh, cameras that have shutters built into them. And I've been doctoring some old speed graphics so hold let me let me get get into it here okay uh hmm, that's not really working right let's try that again okay something is slow about my camera operation right now let me try it one more time oh it's still not working all right oh that's weird all right well i'm not going to worry about it i can use the tiny little screen so this thing probably seen pictures of if you look at the Flickr. This is the uh, universal speed baby. So I cut a speed graphic down to get the minimum flangeback distance. Um, and in this case, I got it short enough to use Mamiya 645 lenses. So this camera has a, a Mamiya 645. Um, let's see if I can it's got a Mimia 645 uh, uh, extension tube that I just glued in into this aluminum plate so that it creates a, you know, a really easy to use mount. Um, let's see, let's set that aside. Um, and that's, uh, I'm going to add other plates with different register distances. Um, the next ones are going to be for some of the old Inex expensive Russian lenses, which have really nice, uh, very nice optics. But, you know, I don't want to buy all these old cameras, and I'm not that big of a fan of oversized SLRs, but I really like the lenses and want to be able to use them. So this uh, is a perfect solution for me. And the other version of it um, is I have a, a three by four, three by four uh, speed graphic, which I have one little problem I have to solve, which is that the back I have on it, which allows me to use roll film backs, isn't centered on the lens axis. It's It was made by Je uh, Jeff Perry for, um, in order to shoot sheet 4x5 sheet film on these cameras, because you have a lot more choices of emulsion. Um, but it didn't work for me because I need to keep the roll film holders, 4x5 roll film holders, on center. Uh, so all I'm going to have to do is create a new film back for it, and I have the parts for that, basically one of Ethan's project backs, and an old, let's see if it's here. Oh, oh that's all right. I can just explain it. Uh, I have an old um, a pack film holder for 4x5, and that provides me with a very thin metal plate that perfectly fits a four by five graph lock holder. And I'll be able to mount a, the two by three roll film holder back right on that and, and have it centered on the lens axis. So another old lens that I got into is super fun and interesting are, this is a, a Bronica. I don't know if you can see it. That's a Bronica uh, S2 era lens. And they're, they're a fascinating lens once you have a shutter to work with because they have um, they have a very unusual design in that the the helical fits all the lenses and it comes in and out on a bayonet mount. Uh, so you know if I mount this bayonet, which comes separate from the lens, in any um, homemade camera, it it will it will take all the old Bronica mount lenses. Um, and provide a, a focusing helical that works with all of them. So it's like a really easy way to create your own system camera. But again, you need a shutter. So what I've been doing are playing with these old speed graphics that I have. I've got three. There's also a 
a full size one. And the, I just measure the shutter speeds. They're none of them accurate anymore, but I just measure them and go with what they really are. And uh, they give me, you know, a good range of shutter speeds. And I just put my own little scale on each one. Um, so I, now that I got kind of caught up in this idea of adapting these old system lenses uh, onto cameras, because I really like the way they look, I like the way they render and you know the, the kind of images you get with them. Uh, that sort of got me going into this whole idea of adapting lenses. And so one of the things is I've been playing with um, ideas for adapting different lenses to the uh, homunculus. So everybody's seen Ethan's homunculus camera. Um, just take the lens out of it and you can put in the standard Mamiya Press, um, let's just unscrew some of this, standard Mamiya Press uh, extension tubes provide a really way to adapt, a good easy way to adapt other lenses onto this camera. All right, let's find the top, there it is. So the extension tubes, the, actually the shallowest one, I've got two in place here, but they're, the shallowest one is almost flush with the helical on this. And of course this camera has it, uh, not with the helical, but with the, the mount. It's almost flush with the mount, but it's a perfect match with just a tiny bit of ad adaptation an N65 helical can go right right in there. So that's going to be kind of the basis for adapting uh, other sh lenses that have shutters onto uh, the, the Camerodactyl uh, homunculus. So that's another adaptation thing that's come up. Well, it's kind of fun. You can see in there I've got the uh, X-Pan film holder. So it's it's set up for that. And then the other uh, recent camera that just sort of fell into my hands here is this. Um, this is a uh, out of an, a Carl Zeiss microscope. There's a friend of mine who's a retired biologist, and I sold him an a old digital camera to which will work really well on the microscope. And, and he just gave me he gave me the camera that had come with the microscope. And it's it's just your basic simple 35 millimeter film back with a film advance and a, and a counter. Like that's all it has. Actually, it doesn't even tell you where you are in the film, but, but it advances accurately and it has rewind. Uh, and it's kind of cool shutter. This is a very simple uh, leaf shutter that you can just sort of see there, which goes from top T and B up through 1 1 25th of a second. And it's a self-cocking shutter, so it's it just fires by witness. If you put in the cable release, you just press the cable release, and it fires the shutter with no need to cock it. And this particular now it's on bulb, but I could set it on, you know, and a speed. And what I really like about that is if you want to play with multiple, if you want to play with. Uh, multiple exposures, you don't have to screw around. Every time I press the plunger, it makes another exposure. So let's say I want to take a bunch in quick succession or something like that. It's a really fun and direct thing. So then because this shutter sticks way out, uh, I, I looked around and found the right lens to use with it, which it turns out is a 90 millimeter. And I've got a nice old 90 millimeter Angulon, which does have a shutter, but it's uh, not very accurate. It's an old, very, very old lens. Uh, and so I can use this, set that on T and use the uh, the shutter in the camera to do this sort of multiple exposure game. Uh, so I've got, and that's in a helical. And that's just some pieces that I had laying around. That's an M58 helical. Um, and it will give me, I'm going to set it up so that it hard stop is at infinity focus, which will end up with a camera that looks a lot like that. So that's another project. And basically just... With the time I have, I'm playing with uh, assembling parts that are lying around the place um, to make make m m more different combinations of things work the way I want them to. That's it. That's really all I have to show. I, I could go on and on about it, but it's all available out there on the internet. If you want to look at Flickr, all my experiments are there. Yeah. Hey, Nick, yeah. tell the people where they can find you on the internet. Okay, so Flickr, Nick Lyle is my name. 
N-I-C-K-L-Y-L-E. I just use my real name. And uh, Instagram, I only post very occasionally, and that's A-V-Y-N-I-C-K. Uh, and then I've been pretty active on the Facebook group for Classic Lenses Podcast and for the Homemade Camera Podcast. So quite a bit of stuff gets posted there. And on my own Facebook page, all you're going to find is political propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> One thing, if you're looking for cheap lenses, uh, look at enlarger lenses. They're usually cheaper than everything else. And uh, what I found is that uh, they're really marvelous. You know, I did make a project, uh, just went and fetched it. Uh, I haven't tested it much. I just did two test shots with it. But uh, it's, it's really good, actually. Uh, I had one of those. Uh, it's a Schneider Componon 75 millimeter. And larger lens. Uh, it's not the M39. It's the one that's got a smaller tread and a retaining nut at the back. And uh, I've just mounted it into some sort of uh, wooden spacer adapter with the Nikon uh, reverse ad lens adapter at the back for uh, just for the mount. And uh, this one allows me to, uh, since it's 75 millimeter, it allows me to do both shift uh, up, down, left, right using some sort of a magnetic plate on it so uh, you know but yeah that's uh, a really that, that's a really yeah. good idea uh, yeah, i've got a, f a couple of those 